Welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I sit them down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and buy your goods off you with a cash offer on the table today. 400. 500 pound bike, Paul. You'll have to be a bit more on that time. That's a strong B. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to advise you to reject that offer and gamble and go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. I shall be on hand at all times to help and advise. Today, the show comes to you from Royal Wharton Bassett. Look at this crowd. They're smiling. They're clutching their treasures. They want to do business. They want to walk away with cash in their pocket or gamble at auction. Either way, they want the real deal. For our first deal of the day, we're over to Karen Del Menny's table, where Tom's hoping is in with a fighting chance of getting the real deal. <laughs> what are we doing with a gown on my table? Well, it's something that was, um, belonged to my mother. Your mother? Yeah, she right. had it passed down from my, gr my grandmother. It's originally from the grandmother. It's coming down the go line? Yeah. OK. Yeah. So what do you know about it? Because you'll have to educate me a little bit on this one. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about it, apart from it's uh, from Smith, London. Right, OK. Um, and that's on the barrel, is it? That's on the barrel, yeah. Right, just along the top that's there. It, it's actually it. um, engraved into it, isn't it? Smith, London. Yeah. OK. Uh, and, and any idea uh, how long it's been in the family? It belonged to your grandmother. Yeah. Any idea before there? I don't know. No. No? No idea. Come on, I was relying on you <laughs> to tell me about this. Oh, my goodness, I'm going to have yeah. to feel my way along. I gather it's a walnut handle. Um, I think it's silver studs on there. Yeah. Now, not being a weapons dealer, I'm going to have to work a bit on instinct here, um, which is nothing new in yeah. the antiques game. You have to do that every day. It looks quite an early piece of equipment yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, I gathered it. It's Do you have any idea? I'm, I'm talking <coughs> at least sort of 18th century. That's yeah, my guess. Yeah, I would say that. Um, might be sort of on the cusp a little bit earlier. I know my grandmother did collect a lot of antiques and things. Oh, did she? So whether she had it as a collection, I, I, I can't say. Yeah. Um, and again, instinct tells me that there is such a thing as what they call a muff pistol, right. whereas the ladies would be travelling um, in carriages and, you know, in fear of being held up by the high women yeah, or something. Sure. And they used to conceal a weapon, um, well, just, just to protect themselves, yeah. basically. And to me, that is just the right size to be concealed, oh, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. So um, I think that's where we're going to be thinking. And it's interesting that it's come down the female line in your family as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. So th there's a lot of clues here. Yeah. But I'm going to struggle with valuing it. Mm. So you've got a canny little look in your <laughs> eye, Tom. I think, I think you know pretty much where yeah, it's going, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah. Now, I apologise if I'm way out here. Um, but I've got to start somewhere. Yeah. All right. So, are you ready? Yeah, I'm Brace ready. yourself. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Um, and that's Smith's, I think I've heard of. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got an awful feeling about yeah. this. Um, well, you can have what I've got in my hand, 140. All right. Can you go a little higher? David. I don't know about well, Tom, but I need your help here. <laughs> well, I think you're, you're having a stab at it. I mean, you were right, it, it is a ladies' pistol, a muff pistol. It would have been concealed in their fur yeah. muffs. Quite a nice little pistol, seems to be in a reasonable order. Um, 150 to 250 is, <laughs> the, is the going rate from our How independent valuer and from our auctioneer. The question is, do you want to go to auction? Do you fancy a gamble? It might be worth going, but I think at the end of the day, with the deduction of the commission, mm. you might be 20 or 30 quid better off if we've got it right on the day. But that's the lower part of the estimate, or just under it. It's probably worth a little bit more. I would try and persuade Karen to... Uh, it's a lady's pistol. Try and get another 20 quid off her. Um, what have we got? 100 and... 140. Yeah. What do you reckon, Tom? Do another blue one. Right, there we go. So we're at £160 now, yeah. and you're happy with I'm that? I'm happy. I can't believe I got that close. That was pure interesting. Thanks so much, Tom. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you for the deal. <laughs> so,
So, 160 quid, another shot in the dark for me. On instinct, so I won't know if I've had a good deal until I get out there and try and sell it, but it's quite a little cutie, isn't it? I rather like it and I think I'm perfectly safe. Let's hope that dealer instinct pays off, Karen. Next, Jerry's hoping Simon Schneider's into designer labels, as his timepiece is, shall we say, pretty timeless. Now, Jerry, you've bought in this wristwatch. Yes. What can you tell me about it? Well, originally it uh, belonged to my uh, grandfather on my mother's side. Uh, he then uh, passed it on to my father, who um, wore it throughout his working life. Sadly, he died about uh, 11 years ago. Um, it was given to me about 20 years ago, and um, I do have another watch that uh, belongs to my father, did belong to my father, and uh, I've decided to, to sell this one. Well, this watch has got a rather magic name on it, hasn't it? It's a name to conjure with, as it's they say, absolutely. yes. Absolutely. It's a name that I think everybody <laughs> will recognise, and it's, of course, a Rolex watch. Yes. And if I have a quick look at the dial, what we've got written on here is Rolex Victory. Yes. Um, now, as far as I know, this watch dates from the 1940s. I believe it's 45. But yeah. I, I believe it was to um, celebrate victory in the Second World War. Hence the name Victory. Exactly, absolutely. Yeah. Having had a quick look at this, I've got a feeling that that's not the original winder. Does that sound correct to you? Or? I think you're possibly right, yes, on that. So, it's a nice watch. I'd like to own it. You'd like to sell it. OK. So it's all down to what we can give you for it. OK. I would like to buy the watch, and I would like to offer you today for it, Jerry. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180 pounds. OK. That's a good start of 10, as they say, isn't it? <laughs> what, what would you do with the money if you did sell it? What I'd like to do with it is um, buy my uh, wife uh, an eternity ring with the proceeds. So, in a sense, I'd be reinvest re recycling the, uh, the watch in. Well, what about if I put down another 20 and said 200 pounds? Uh, I think you've still got a way to go, yeah. So, yeah. Would you like David's opinion see what he thinks? Yes, yeah, so it would be uh, very. Useful. Well, what I can tell you is what the independent values and the auctioneer say. Two to three is the estimation of both the auctioneer and the independent valuer. If you can persuade Simon perhaps to put a little bit more on, then I think it probably isn't worth the gamble. But if it stays at two, maybe it is worth the gamble. So I'm going to leave you with Simon. He knows the stuff. Thank you, David. So I'm prepared to put down another ten pounds, Jerry. Right. So that's two hundred and ten. I was looking more for the two two fifty mark. Take that one away. And put that one there. Two twenty. Mm-hmm. Would that do it? And replace the brown one. Right. So if I put that down, we've now got two hundred and thirty pounds. Can you see yourself getting a nice eternity ring? I'll probably have that? to put something towards it. But it's a start. It's a start. Well, thank yeah. you very much for thank coming Thank you very much today. indeed. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> and I was happy with Simon's offer, bearing in mind the, uh, the damage to the watch. Um, so, yeah, overall, very pleased. Jeff? Let's pop over to Helen Gardner's table, where Jeff's brought in some unwanted pieces from a name you're sure to know. And you've brought in some of your Moorcroft? I certainly have, yes. Tell me all about your Moorcroft. Uh, well, I, well, I can't tell you much because I only acquired it about three months ago. So you've owned it for three months? Yes. Yep. Um, basically, it came from uh, another person's collection. I bought the whole collection. These are pretty new. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, modern. These are uh, 21st century yes, Moorcroft. So, yes. Which I think is a tribute to Moorcroft that it's still keeping going. Very much so. And it's still making such nice things in the 21st century. Yes, and it's still quality. Yes, and it is quality, as you say. Well, they're, they're nice. They are. This one's rather interesting, this little ginger jar. It's either peonies or anemones. But it's on the bottom, it says trial. So it's a trial piece, so yes. whether they were trying a new pattern or a new colourways, I don't know. But that's interesting on the bottom here. It'd be very rare, then. Well, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> anyway, do you want a lot of money for your milk crop? As much as possible. Well, how much am I going to offer you? 
20 pounds, 40 pounds. Are you happy with that? <laughs> I would like more. Please. You like more than that? Yes, please. What about 50 pounds? Mm, I would like a little bit more than that, please. A little bit more? Mm. How about if I put on, if I can find one, if I can put down a fiver, mm. would, that, would that help you? I don't like that colour at all. Yeah. Not that I keep many of them. OK, they're 60 pounds. That's going to be my last offer on those. I do quite like them. They're pretty, but I'm not going to go any further than £60. Now, what do you think? Do you think you could go with that, or would you rather try your luck at auction? I think I could go with... I would have to take them to auction. You've that got to take them to yeah, auction. I, I hope you do well. They are very pretty, very nice, yeah. very collectible, a bit too modern for me, but I'm sure you'll find a home for them and hope you get lots more money. I think I could possibly get about another £20, £30 more. So I think I'd like to try my way at auction and see if I can get the best of the money. Let's hope you're right, Jeff. We'll find out if auctioneer Martin Lambert can get a better deal for the Moorcraft after the break. £185. Thank you, Jim. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Royal Morton Bassett. Before the break, Jeff turned down Helen's £60 for his modern Moorcroft. He thinks he can get an extra £20 from the auction, but has he made the right call? Did you do the right thing, mate? Well, we're about to find out. 50 to 80 is the estimation. Still good value, I have to say. That's £70 there, John. It's over its reserve. Take me out. Five is bid in the room now, thank you, sir. Five, £85 we have, and look around me, because that's my job. At £85 in any middle of the room, then selling at 85 we'll done £85. Thank you, Jim. Well, the good news is, first of all, it got past its reserve. It made £85 under the gavel. I've got some commission to take off. £72 you're going home with. What's your first reaction? Pleased? I felt lucky and I'm glad he brought it. Well, you were right. Yes. You know, Jeff said, I feel lucky, and he was right. I have to say, on the day, I thought, it's a little bit late, it won't make its money, but what do I know? That was the real deal, 72 quid. Well done, Jeff. Your hunch was right. More money in your pocket. Now, let's trot back to the dealer's den where Jill's got high hopes for her family piece. Well, I've got a better course for the rider. <laughs> And it's been in the family since 1937. And I've just brought it along today to see what it was worth and see if I can get a good price for it. Let's see if Tim can keep this deal on course. Now, everybody out there will know what it is. It's a basic horse, isn't yes. it? Yeah. There's the basic mark there, basic England. Can you tell me a little bit about how you acquired it? Well, it belonged to my husband's aunt and she was 21 in 1937. She had red hair and yeah. she rode horses and it was given to her as a birthday present. Oh, that's nice. So why are you selling it, Jill? Well, she gave it to my daughter. Yeah. And my daughter's just had a baby and she'd really like a very nice camera to take <laughs> pictures of the baby. <laughs> right, right. It's so, sort of like family recycling, yes, that, isn't yeah. it, really? <laughs> Well, let's have a look at it. I mean, like you say, the date is, you're absolutely spot on with the date, you know, 1930s, and you can tell by the, the lady and the style of the clothing, the hair and everything. Um, it's not modern, is it? You yeah. know, it, it, it's, it's of the period. Right, I've got my money out, Jill. Right. 50, 100 pounds. Well, I think it's worth a bit more than that. <laughs> do you know, I wake up and I hear that really... <laughs> I bet you do, yes. <laughs> um, is £100, is that not a good camera these days? Well, I think for a really nice camera, and she's a beautiful baby. Right. She deserves a good camera. <laughs> well, I've heard some pictures in my time. <laughs> um, 120. Could you go? Bit further. <laughs> so you want me to buy the camera and the film now? Yeah. Is that... yeah. <laughs> £130, Jill. Yeah, I think that's You've a got deal. Got a deal. Yes. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank now, I'm you. not going to ask you what you're going to spend the money <laughs> on because I already know. So what's baby called? Her name's Daisy. Daisy Boo. Daisy Boo? Yes. 
That's cute, isn't it? Well, well done, Daisy Boo. Uh, your granny's done a good deal. <laughs> Holly ho, that'll get you snap happy, Jill. Let's catch up with Karen, where Marion's hoping she'll fork out the cash. So, we've got a box of delights, we? have, we? yes. Would you like to reveal? Yes. OK, right, that's quite interesting. There's a full set of 12, 12 of each, too, yes. by the looks. 12 forks and 12 knives, cake. OK, so, what's going to be my first question? Are they silver? Are, are they, they plated? Silver? OK, and they're marked very clearly. Yeah. There's no doubt about it, and they are 800. 800 means 800 parts per thousand, and the standard hallmark or sterling mark that we recognise is 925. Mm -hmm. So for us, being continental silver, it's slightly what you call a little bit lower. Yeah, right? right, yeah, I understand. Um, not being detrimental to it. You know, they're lovely objects and very attractive, aren't they? So are these family pieces? They were my grandparents. Oh, no! Mm, I know, I know. But they're sentimental to me, and I've got modern sets now, but I don't think my son and daughter would appreciate them. Not I, modern I, living, is it? No. So it's just down to me whether I can tempt you with the price. price. So let's put some money out. And stop me if I'm going too if fast. If you're going too fast, yes. And putting too much down. I'm relying on uh, you, Mary. Right, OK. Right. 20, 40, 60, 80. 100? No. no. True? Sure. Yes, I'm definite. 120, 140, 160. No, a little bit more. Mm, you know your mind, don't you, Marion? <laughs> I'm up against it yeah, here, aren't I? Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I've got a figure here. Have you? Yes, I have, yes. So 180, Mariam. If you put another 20... Ooh, it's 200. Mm -hmm. If you put another 20, then... Would you compromise on another 10 and give me a chance? So we're up to £190. Another five? Oh, you want the I last know, yeah. bit of blood, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Stop making me suffer. <laughs> I might just put it down in coins, just to annoy you, but I'm not. I'm going to stick another five, so we're going to have a deal then. Could I just ask my husband? By all yeah. means, Mary. 195? Yeah. Oh, yes, that was yeah, relaxed enough, yeah. wasn't it? We <laughs> okay, but we've got a deal, oh, yeah. Thank goodness okay, for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shame hubby wasn't so happy though. I'd rather they were both sort of really pleased with the bid, but I think she got a really fair price, so you know my conscience is clear. I would have liked 200, but she offered me 195 pounds, and rather than go to auction, I'm really happy with that. Anne's hoping to move on an unwanted gift, but what will Helen make of it? Well, Anne. Brought a nice little watch in here. I have, yes. I have. Now, is this your watch? It's my watch, yes. Where did you get the watch, Anne? Well, my husband gave it to me for my 40th birthday. Oh, now, lucky you. Quite a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> We're not asking that question. <laughs> but it's a nice little watch. Thank you. So, why are you selling it, Anne? Well, unfortunately, I don't use it or, or wear it. And um, I feel like... I said to him, could I sell it? He said, yes, and I'd like to replace it with a piece of jewellery that I can wear and enjoy. So um, he's, he's quite all right with he's that. He's all right with it, yes, is he? Yes, yes. Mm. It's a nice little watch, you know. It's a, yes. a nice little it's gold, 18 karat gold. Chester, 1878, I think, or thereabouts. Nicely marked. You say it goes. Yes, it does. We had it go in yeah. yesterday, yes. Do you know how much money you want for your watch? Well, I've got a figure in my mind, yes. but I'd like to know what you'd offer me what for I think. it. Well, I'm not the best watch dealer on the planet, but I like this little watch. It's nice. It's 18 carat. So I think I'd better put some money on the table, see yes, if I can test yes, you. Please. Well, there's £50. There's £100. There's £150. Oh, a new one. £150. That'll buy you a lot of bling. No, I'm afraid that's not enough, Helen. I'm, I'm, oh, perhaps I'm being greedy, but I'd like <laughs> more than that. Well, uh, how much more would I pay? It's 
Scottish one, that's worth a bit more. It's 170. I was um, hoping for um, something more, in, perhaps in the region of £250. Uh, take that away. Can I tempt you at £200? But I'm, I'm not going to go to £250, but there's £200. I'll have to think about it. You have a think and... 210? 210. Since I like your watch and I like you. <laughs> 210. Now you're going to have to get probably more than 250 auction to yes, get Yes, yes, I'd have to pay so 15% that's, commission, wouldn't I'd, I? You'd have to pay a, some commission. Yes, I think that's quite a fair offer. Thank you very much. I think Ellen. it's a I fair think offer. I'll deal on that. Yes, well, well done. And what are you going to spend your money on, Oh, Alex? I'm going to go out spending. Well, yes, I'm I going to go out spending. I shall enjoy wise. spending it I on something nice. Wise. Thank you, Helen, very nice. much. Nice, and thank you for bringing in such a nice thing. And I uh, won't be scrapped. And thank you. I'll keep it for a wee I'm while. I'm glad you like it. I do like it. I've paid probably too much money, but I don't care. That's a nice thing to own. That's a high quality, 18 carat, handmade little watch. Looks like you pocketed a good deal there, Helen. Coming up after the break, Tim's making excuses. It's not the easiest of stuff to sell, really, I have to say. But will that excuses bid? I am going to make you an offer. Please don't shout. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Royal Wooden Bassett. Next up to face a dealer is Lynn. I've bought my mother-in-law's collection of crested uh, little pots and uh, she's picked them up uh, from different places all over the country over the years. She's 95 and uh, it's time to sell on and uh, get some money for it so that she can use it before, before it's too late, really. <laughs> but will Tim prove a willing buyer? Collection of crested wear. It is, yes. Now, this must have taken you years to collect. It wasn't me. <laughs> it was, uh, well, you can guess Not that. responsible <laughs> for that. It's my mother-in-law's. She's 95, and uh, she lived in Yorkshire. I live in Yorkshire. I thought I recognised the accent. I do. What yeah. part of Yorkshire is she? Keefley. Well, blow me down. Is it the same place? Guess who's from Keefley? No. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's amazing. It is. <laughs> but I think it's time. She's 95 and she deserves to have the, the benefit from it. Yeah, absolutely. Has she bought them new or has she bought them second-hand? No, she, she's bought them herself. So she, Everywhere she went, she picked up a so new one. So she picked up She one. picked them up yeah. herself, yeah. Right, right, because they're made by various factories. Probably the factory that everybody knows is, is the Goss factory. Goss one, yeah. 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 Um, and, and this one, I'll just pick this one up here. This is a model of a German bomb dropped on Bury St Edmunds from the Zeppelin, the 30th of April 1915. Oh, okay. And that's a Goss, and that's their uh, little logo there. We've got two of those. I mean, they're quite unusual. The Americans used to quite like Goss, but it, it's not the easiest of stuff to sell, really, I have to say. I am going to make you an offer. Okay. Please don't shout. <laughs> I have to have her best interests at heart. You do, time. absolutely. Yeah. Twenty... Thirty pounds. No. <laughs> no, definitely not, no. Well, look, if I change that... Forty pounds. No, no. I, I, I think that... Um, I didn't want it to go, I wanted to keep it in the family, but I think it's got to go now, and it's got to go, and I think maybe to auction is the right place. So you're not going to take my £40? I'm not, no. Even if I made it into £50? I don't think so, no. Good luck. Thank you very much. And just in the back of my mind, I, I feel that you'll, you'll do all right. I think, you know, one or two of them will be OK. <laughs> Well, that was a good offer from Tim. Let's hope it goes your way in the sale room, Lynn. You've decided to gamble, you've decided to come into the auction. 40 to 60 pounds is the estimation, and there is a reserve of 40. So it is a real gamble. That's right, yeah. You turn down 50 with no commission, 
we need to do better than that to take away commission and beat the 50 quid. Are we going to do it? Well, let's find out. Early 20th century crested wear miniatures. Have a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. A few of you have commented some uh, interesting shapes there, I have to say, and there's a good collection. There we go. You tell me what it's worth. I'm sure you will. Is it 80 pounds worth? Is it 80? Come on, a couple of quid a piece, no money. 50 pounds then starts me. 30 if you will, then any interest at 30 pounds. Slow pounds start in the sale room. Pounds in. Who's going on at 30 pounds in? Can we start at 30? We can start. No real interest. Sadly, the problem. 30. We've got an auction. Five. 40. Ah, 40 pounds with you, Jim. In the centre of the room, 40 pounds then. At 40, then I'm amazed. At 40, only all done at 40. Yeah, uh, give it a go at 40. Thank you. 40 pounds. Take away the commission is only going to leave £34. That's life. That's life, I have to say. You were offered £50 by Tim Hogarth, our dealer. That turned out to be the real deal. Never mind, they can't take away the memories. So, on the day, the real deal was with Tim. 50 quid, Tim. You know your collectibles, mate, don't you? <laughs> Back to the dealer's den, where Karen's hoping to get a handle on the next deal. Quite an interesting object, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Is it something yeah. you've had for a long time? No, it belongs to my sister. Um, it was given to her by a neighbour when they were doing a flower arranging um, presentation in Swindon. Yeah. Um, a Victorian theme. So I were don't they know dried flowers? Yeah, they, the ordinary flower arrangements. I thought they so might they be, because we've got a big split down there. Oh. I don't think it'll hold the water. <laughs> oh, it'd have to be then, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they must have been yeah. dried. Right. Here we have what, at first glance, this looks like terracotta, possibly a dirty silver tanker, but it's not either of those, is it? No. It's actually leather. That's right. Um, which is really interesting. Now, it was a Victorian theme Flower display. Flower arranging, yeah, display. OK. Yeah. Well, this is actually probably 100 years, I think, earlier than that. Yeah? Because I think it's Georgian. Um, everything about it tells me it's Georgian. The style of the handle, sort of simplicity of it. Yeah. And if we turn it over, um, there's years and years and years of wonderful wear on the bottom there. Um, so it's an ale jug, isn't it? I would think so, yeah. Probably for pints, would you yeah, think? Yeah, I would think, okay. yeah. And just on the side here, we've got a really nice indent of a seal which is probably to assay decent measure, it's a proper measure. Oh, yeah. And that's mm. probably why it's been stamped on the side there. Mm. But I do like it, because it's a bit different. It's not going to be a fortune. No, well, we didn't expect a fortune, yeah. but... OK, I'm just going to put some money down, fill my way with you... OK. Um, ..and see how we go. Right, are you ready for this? 20, 40, 60 pounds. I think that's quite generous, actually. Can you go a bit more? So do you, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Got ya. You think I'm being quite generous. Um, I do like it. I do like it. How much it's that... unusual, isn't it? I, um, I like it enough to go another tenner. Um, only because I've never had one. And I just think it's really interesting. And to me, I look at this and I just see that this is sat in a tavern for two, three hundred yeah. years. Mm -hmm. And the history that this little jug has seen, you can only imagine, can't you? So we got a deal? We got a deal. Thanks Thank you very much. much. I'm very happy and I think Karen is happy with her purchase as well. So good deal all round. 70 quid is not a lot for something that's two or three hundred years old. Give me some pleasure, so hopefully it gives someone else some pleasure. So a happy buyer and happy seller. That really is the real deal. Coming up, has Simon given the game away? Well, I really like it. I think I've given that away, haven't I? You have, yeah. But will Paul be tempted by his offer? £500, Paul. I would love you to say yes. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Things are winding down in Royal Wooten Bassett. But in our last deal of the day, Paul's brought in something for Simon that's got everyone excited. The Duke and the auctioneer are watching closely on the sidelines. How come this is in your possession? Well, I got it at a... Uh, I'd call it a, a flea market. You might call it a, a poor antique sale. But uh, I seen it, I knew it was good quality. And I thought, I'll have a punt on it. 
briefly, it's a very, very nice ladies' compact. Yeah. But it's a bit more than that, isn't it? It is, yeah. First of all, we should just briefly talk about the outside of this case. This is a solid silver box made in Switzerland, probably around 1910, 1920. 1926. 1926, there we go. Beautifully enameled. And... Very importantly, with the enamel, which is on both sides of this, it's all in very good condition. There isn't any chips or bits missing. Then we open the box up, and we've got these different compartments. Again, all lovely engine tooled here. Open them up on the inside, and we can see they're all gilded on the inside. All the little signs of quality that you look for in something like this are all here. And then the one I like most, actually, is this one. I pull that mirror the mirror inside which pulls down you've got this lovely little ivory strip there as well it's a very very nice quality box but it lacks one thing and that is a good maker's name because a box of this quality you would expect to see a Cartier stamp on it but unfortunately it hasn't got a maker's mark on it I recognise Um, it just sort of reeks of quality doesn't it what is a box like this worth I've got a smile on my face because when we first came across to the table, Martin said to me, blimey, that's a specky lot. And you're right, specky being speculative, and I think it is speculative. It just shines out the quality. It really does. I think it's probably Swiss, early 20th century, uh, looking at the outside of the box, wonderfully enameled in superb condition. You've got that guilloche running along the top. The outside tells the story, you open it up and it tells the rest of the story. Stunning. In many years I've been auctioneering, I can't remember the last time if I've ever seen anything quite like it. You're selling it to me now, but let's see what our dealer from Brighton, Simon, says. He knows a good thing when he sees one. He buys this type of merchandise, he buys quality, but will he pay the price? Let's find out. Well, I really like it. I think I've given that away, haven't I? You have, yeah. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 pound by it, Paul. It'll have to be a bit more than that, Simon. That's a strong B. Well, that's the fastest time I've seen Simon bring out 500 pounds. <laughs> he, he was almost playing poker, wasn't he? What do you think? First of all, where's your estimation on this? I'm saying five to seven hundred conservatively. Okay, that's your lower estimate. Mm-hmm. The independent value, as they were more bullish, they said six to eight hundred. I think that's a good start, but I don't think that's enough money, and I think it's worth more. I'm going to tell our seller. Should we get David's opinion? Yes, I'd like David's opinion. Well, first of all, what a fabulous quality item. Continental. The lady who owned that uh, will have been a lady of great substance and style. Silver, enamel, a necessaire, um, perhaps for makeup, for small accoutrements. It is a fabulous item. Now, they are enthusiastic, both the independent valuers and the auctioneer. Surprise, surprise. (laughs) You're thinking, oh, (laughs) my goodness, okay. The lowest was five to seven. The best was six to eight. But these things aren't the easiest things to sell because what do you do with it? I'm going to say to you, 500 is a good stab at it. It is the lower part of the lower estimate. I think if you thought six to eight, that's probably where it should be. Now the question is, there's 15% at auction, so bear that in mind. So even if you got the 800 pounds, you'd have 120 to take off, so. Well, um, haven't finished yet. He hasn't finished, and when he says that, you know what he means. He means, I like it, and I want to buy it. And I think Simon can sell that like shelling peas. Thanks, David. I'm going to put down another 100 quid. That's 600. And then I'm going to put down another 20 pound. That's 620. The reason I've done that, because that's roughly what you would end up with if it made eight in auction approximately, give or take. And I th- I would love you to say yes. I think it's a decent bid. 
No, we've got no problems then. I'm just wondering, is he playing with us a little bit here? Let's think about this. Let's just say you got 750 in the sale room for that. Yeah. 750, 75 quid, and then another 37 quid. You're over 100. Bit of that. Uh, say about 110 quid. 110 quid off the 750. 640. 640. You see, he's already got it worked out. 640. Yeah. 620 is on there. Yeah. You know where he's going. He's going to 650. Yeah. The question is, can you do any better at auction? That has got quality. He's put in the 650. 50 pound note to talk about. Um, there's I'm going to get out of the way, there now. Yeah. and you can consider that. The question okay. is, can you get the 800, the full price, yeah. and do better? Or is that what you would go away with after the deduction of commission? Mm -hmm. Not a bad offer, but a superb item. So it's up to you. If you want to gamble, I'll take you there. Thanks, David. I think it's a good offer, Simon, and I'm going to accept your money. Well, thank you very thank much, you Liz. Much. That's the words I wanted to hear, thank Paul. You. Paul, I've got to ask you one question now, because I know you bought this in the trade. How long ago did you buy it? I promise you won't thump me. I promise I won't thump you. 200. Well, what a lovely buy. How long ago was that, Paul? Uh, about six months ago, that one. Well, just shows you, people out there, still it's out worth there, looking yeah. around because you can still yeah. pick up the bargains. But I'm very happy with it, and thank you very much indeed Thanks for coming in today. <laughs> What a great way to end the day here in Royal Wooten Bassett. All in all, our sellers have walked away with nearly £1,800 today. Karen's had a hugely successful day, selling the muff pistol on for £200, the cutlery on for £230 and the leather jug for £85. No such luck for Tim, though. It's not the easiest of stuff to sell, really, I have to okay. say. He took a fall and lost a tenner. Helen paid top whack for the lovely pocket watch, but found a buyer in a fellow dealer, selling at £240. <laughs> Just a minute ago, Paul sold his ladies' compact to our Simon, making him a whopping profit. Uh, I don't mind anybody making a profit. I've made a decent profit. And as David says, usually your first profit, the best one. So I'm happy with that. And Simon managed to make his own return, selling it at an antiques fair for £900. We've had a great day here in Royal Wotton Battery. There's been bags of action, lots of buying and lots of selling. That's what we like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.